All right, there's a transport truck. So I'm going to get behind the transport truck. I'm going to increase my speed. I'm just going to keep that distance here. I can look, I can make it closer and further away. Get initialize the lane change. So you can see what that looks like. It's pretty cool. I'll do that again. And one more time, I gotta take this exit. So it does it pretty quickly, like it doesn't mess around. But it also can see solid lines and it won't cross them. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you how to custom code a new G23 series. Alright, so the purpose of this video is to show you how to change your instrument cluster to have a more advanced driving view so you can actually see the cars around you and change lanes, etc. So before we get too far into it, let me show you what it looks like stock, how the car came from the factory and then I'll follow up at the end of the video with how it looks after the custom coating. So let's cut over to my GoPro footage of my gauge cluster driving around stock first. So my hands are off the wheel right now. The car's completely driving itself, braking behind this car here and steering behind the car. All you can see is this little symbol of the car, nothing else. The vehicle ahead of me is being tracked right now. That's an indication where lane markings are not there and uh, it wants you to grab the wheel. Right now it will auto brake for me, but it's not going to steer until it feels comfortable. Now it's taking over steering. Since there's a car in front of me, I'm not touching anything. It's hitting the brakes to avoid an accident or just regular driving. So the car in front of me has come to a stop pulling up a little bit, going to come to a stop again at a stop sign. It's doing it all for you, assisted driving. So this is a bit of a curvy road. It's kind of hard to show you from the outside how it's handling it, but it does a really good job of staying in the lanes unless it finds that it's not comfortable with the lane markings. That happens every once in a while. So every 15 seconds or so, if everything seems fine but you're not touching the wheel, it will do that. It will go yellow and ask you to grab the wheel. But you have a very basic display on the left side and that's it. Nothing like what's potentially available on this car. So during city driving, it's not super useful. Um, it's more useful on the highway and especially in stop and go traffic, it does an awesome job. But for regular day-to-day -day driving, you wouldn't use it so much. Now after coding, I'm expecting to be able to change lanes seamlessly as well. We're unlocking the full potential of the system. So this is the assisted driving with stock coating, you don't have a full display in the middle showing you all the cars around you and the ability to change lanes, etc. Even though it's not regulated in the US, um, for some reason the early cars came from the factory without that being coded in. It's kind of strange that they did that and why with a software update, you, it doesn't automatically ask you if you want to enable the full display. But regardless, that's what the coating is for. You're gonna need one of these ICOM cables or ENIC cables to be able to do this. I'll put a link in the description for where you guys can buy one of these. This will work for F-Series and G-Series cars. So you'll need your laptop as well. And I'm gonna put a link in the description for how to set up the software we're gonna be using today. It's called ESYS. So on the G23 series, your OBD port is going to be over on the driver's side left. You're gonna be connecting up to your ethernet port on your laptop. Put the key in the vehicle. Now we're set up, I'm gonna switch over to screen recording on my laptop. Okay, so the car has to be running before we can do anything else. I'm gonna start the car up. Okay, so I'm using ESYS X Launcher. It'll take a minute or two to fully load. So as you can see up here, we have ESYS 3.3.334. That's the version I'm using. We're going to click the connect button up here. Now we have to choose our iStep version. The thread that I'm going to link below is going to show you where to download the latest data files or the data files. So I'm using this 1907 S18A. 
that's appropriate for this car. You can also use 1903. They call this the I-Step. You want to make sure you don't click the direct version, you click the, the other one right there. And then you want connection via VIN and series I-Step. We have a connection to the car. You want to, If you don't have it already opened up, click on expert mode right here. Click on coding. Now you want to read the FA or the vehicle order. It's already activated, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. If you don't already have this saved, make sure you save it as a backup. I already have that backed up. Next up, we're going to click on read ECU. It's going to bring up the tree of modules. Same story here. You would save that if you haven't done so already. What we're doing is coding the assisted driving view. So we're going to be unlocking the assisted driving view via coding. And that's what looks kind of like a Tesla. So we're going to scroll down where you have the D combi for right click read coding data all right that was done successfully close that and then you press this little plus sign here and then right click this again where it's in yellow and then right here where it says SVT compare view edit FDL name click that All right, now we're going to search. The first thing we need to search is CB underscore FZG underscore UMGEB UNG. It'll be underscore FAS, but that should be enough. We should be able to pull it up just by this much. So we can go over here, expand that out, and then where it says here, Agalisten. Lesson means read in German. That's the setting that it's currently set to. We'd have to right click this, edit, change it to active. All right, so we're done there. Next thing we need to search for is CB underscore pre select underscore navi. I'll try searching for that and see if that's enough, which is right below. Same story here. Underneath, click right here. Right click, edit, change this to active. Next up, PIA underscore FZG. Search for that. And that's the right one here right click this edit active lastly s-i-c-h-t underscore a-b a-b-s that should be enough to pull up what i need search right there expand this out under here change that to active and then we're done. We've done the four things that need to be changed. We're going to click on the save button up at the top here. Now we're going to hit back. And then we're going to go back to this. We're going to make sure it's selected, which it is, because I was still on it from before. And right here, you want to click code NCD. You don't want to hit the code button or the code default values, nothing. You just want code NCD. Okay, now I'm going to click this. You'll see a pop-up box. You may hear the car bombing, etc. My gauge cluster just reset there really quickly. And it says finish processing right here in German. You just click close. And we have zero issues, zero errors. That's what we wanted in green. Click close. Now we're going to disconnect from the car, close connection, and I'll come back to my other camera where I show you the new setting on my iDrive. Now if I go over to settings, driver's assistance, driving, I have this display assisted driving view when driver assistance is active. So now you can see the car and you'll be able to see up to three lanes. You'll be able to see if there's motorcycles transport trucks, cube vans, etc. It will be able to identify the type of vehicle.
So if you bought a 2020 G-Series with the driver's assistance package and it was made after July, chances are it'll come with this already unlocked if you're in the United States. There are other countries where this hasn't been fully unlocked due to regulatory reasons, so I want to make it very clear that you guys that are following this video, if you're considering it, but if you're in a country where it hasn't been approved for regulatory reasons, do not follow this. I don't want to cause any problems for BMW really and uh, I don't want this video to get taken down. So to be very clear, this is only for people in the US. If you bought a car manufactured before July that has the latest software update, but this feature wasn't unlocked in your software update. I wanna make it so that it will change lanes for me automatically. So I'm gonna show you how to code that. So this is lane change assistant. We're gonna go under BDC body here and we want this one 7083, right click read coding data. Like this SVT compare and we're going to search here spur wedge so underscore a for assistant right here go under here under auga listen auga listen I'm not saying that properly I'm sure of that instead of right click we're going to right click here, edit, change this to active, save, and we click back, and we're still on that. So we're going to click code NCD. And FYI, if this isn't listed as active, just right click and say activate FA. But I'm already showing it as active, so we can work with this. So we're going to code NCD. Okay, we're done. Click close. We got green. We're good. Next module we're going to look under is this here, HU, MGU, this 3E52. Recoding data. SVD compare view. Searching for the same word, assistant, right here. Go under here. Instead of not active, we're changing it to Gen 1. Save. Back. Code NCD. Click close. We're good there. Last thing to code is under the SAS2 right here. We're going to right click, read coding data. C underscore SWA underscore V should pull it up. So right now it's NR000. We're going to change this, edit 2001, save. back code NCD we're good there no errors so now we will disconnect okay so now I'm going to car settings driver's assistance driving We have automatic lane change as an option now. So I'll go demonstrate some of that on the road now. I just tried the automatic lane change for the first time. That was really cool. You can't click it all the way over, you just kind of got to hold it slightly. So I'm going to take this exit here. Actually there's a transport truck coming up so I'm going to slow down. 
I want to see what that looks like on the animation. So transport truck's coming up on my left. And I'm going a little below the speed limit just to see what that looks like. You'll see it now. It's detecting it as a bigger car, but let's see. If I get behind it, if it has better logic. All right, there's a the transport truck. So I'm going to get behind the transport truck. I'm gonna increase my speed. I'm just gonna keep that distance here. I can, I can make it cl closer and further away. There's a truck pulling up on the right of me really fast to pick up. You can see its rate of speed. It tracks that pretty good. All right, let's do a lane change. It does it pretty quickly, actually. It moves over, like, relatively aggressively, but in a safe-looking manner. So that truck's quite a bit of ways, but it's still tracking in. I'm gonna do another lane change. Really neat. It waited for the line to break open because it was a solid line. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It has the logic to do that. So right now I have it so auto lane change works on the highway. You can custom code it so that it'll work on side streets and stuff as well, but I don't think I even want to go there. I may do that down the line, but for now it's just for the highway. There's one more setting I could have changed, but I'm not going to bother because this is the way they deliver these in the U.S with auto lane change on approved roads. So that's what I'm doing. I'm on a ramp to the highway. It waits for it to be safe, and then it changes lanes. It, it knows what to do. It's a pretty impressive. One more lane change. It's really neat. All right, guys, that shows you how to code a modern BMW in F or G series car. I had to do a little bit of learning to be able to figure out ESIS, but all in all, it's pretty user friendly, in my opinion, compared to NCS Expert, because you don't have to get into any kind of trace file manipulation, etc. So when I bought this car, I was actually considering a 340i F30, like a 2016 for the channel, but I specifically bought this car because I wanted the autonomy. I figured it's the future. And I've actually kind of always wanted a Tesla just because I was impressed by the autonomy. So when I found out that there's more available and you can do more and get more of a modern look on your gauge cluster, as well as unlock some of that autonomy, I had to do it. If you guys have this car, but you're in a country where this is not yet approved, please follow your regulations. I'm sure with time, they'll eventually get it all approved and then you'll be free to code or ask the dealer to unlock it for you. But anyway, hopefully you guys found this video useful or at least entertaining. If this is the first video you're catching up, mine, consider subscribing. I do upload regularly. Thanks for watching.